I am Wander001 and this is my review of the Western Digital Elements Portable External Hard Drive. This particular external hard drive that I have in front of me is their 500 gigabyte version. They also sell a 750 gigabyte and one terabyte version of this drive. You might be asking yourself, you might be asking yourself, why do a review on an external hard drive? There were some things that I wanted to know when I was looking for an external hard drive. Really the only reason I got an external hard drive is because I need a stopgap to put my videos like this one on until I either get a NAS or a RAID array. I haven't decided yet, but that's why I got external hard drive here. Uh, this is the 500 gigabyte version, like I said, uh, only because price-wise I, I didn't want to go into the terabyte, so I got this guy here. Uh, the dimensions you're looking at are three inches in width, four and a quarter for height, and just shy, well, not just shy, but much slimmer than an inch. If we look at the top here, it is the matted black finish, just like on the bottom. Uh, in the corners, you'll notice four rubberized feet. The sides are a shiny plastic. Uh, on the back here, you will see the USB 3.0 port and indicator light. That is one of the reasons I went with this particular device is because it is a USB 3.0 device. I could have gotten more storage if I went with a Buffalo external hard drive. This is a terabyte hard drive which I use for work but it's only USB 2.0. So the USB 3.0 that I get with the Western Digital it has faster transfer rates which is always a plus especially if you're dealing with large files like videos and photos if you're shooting in RAW. Um, also in the box with the Western Digital external hard drive here, you get the proprietary USB 3.0. Uh, so here's the part that goes into your computer. You can see the slight blue tinge. That's what indicates that it is a USB 3.0. And here you have the SS version of a plug-in for the USB 3.0 into the device itself. This External hard drive is completely a plug and play device, meaning that you do not need to have uh, another wire to charge it, not charge it, but to have it run. Um, I have a very old Seagate, which is what I'm currently housing videos and other things on. This I got five, six years ago. It requires external power as well as a connection to the computer and is huge. This is only 250 gigs. This is twice that. Uh, when you plug it into the computer, it downloads all the drivers you need and it also runs off of the USB power so you don't have to worry about uh, having that external power source. It is compatible with both and is backwards compatible with USB 2.0 but I would suggest if your com computer can handle it, use the USB 3.0 because you will get the faster transfer speeds. Speaking of speeds, the hard drive itself does 5400 RPM, so it is fast enough that you could watch movies or edit videos directly off of the hard drive with minimal stuttering. Um, going back to the fact that I said it is a 500 gigabyte hard drive, only 465 gigs are actually usable. Other things are for formatting and the drivers and uh, items like that. Also, the drive is formatted in NTFS. If you know what that means, good for you. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Uh, there is a difference between NTS, NTFS and FAT32. Both are compatible with Windows. If you want to know NTFS, you can have larger file sizes on here. So rather than being limited to, I believe it's a 3, 3.5 to 4, a uh, gigabyte file on a FAT32 NTSF, you can exceed that. All right, the last bit that I will say before I bring you into some uh, on-screen time because I ran some uh, read-write tests as well as some health tests on the hard drive when I first got it. It is Windows 8 compatible if that's something that you're worried about, so you don't have to. Um, it's also very lightweight. It's much lighter than actually the Buffalo here. It's got some uh, substance to it. This one feels lighter even though if you look at the depth it is slightly larger. And while I'm talking about larger, 
my pack of cards that I normally use for this type of thing. So you have an idea of just how big that is. So with all of that said, I will bring you in now for the on-screen read-write test so you get an idea, uh, both using USB 3.0 and the backwards compatible USB 2.0. I'll run two tests so you get to see what those speeds are like and you can decide for yourself. I would still recommend using the USB 3.0. This is the first read-write test using a program known as Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, what you'll notice is it did five passes at 1000 megabytes or one gigabyte on the totally empty drive. It displays both read-write speeds for sequential data writing and random data writing and then these two are some extra in-depth ones. Uh, currently it's plugged into a USB 2.0 port just to give you an idea of the speed difference between a USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 port if you happen to do that. If you're looking at sequential data you're looking at a read speed of 34 megabytes and a write speed of 24 megabytes and a random read speed of 20 megabytes and a random write speed of 25 megabytes. Next, I will run the program using the 3.0 port still on the empty drive to show you the vast speed difference between the USB 2.0 and USB 3.0. Here we see the read-write speed for the hard drive uh, plugged into a USB 3.0 port while there is no information on the disk. Depending on which one you want to look at, you're looking at either a read-write speed of 113 megabytes read to 112 megabytes write down to 39 read, 64 write. And here we can see the hard drive after running for, as you can see here, an hour. That was running the two different speed tests, sorry, read-write tests and moving 60 gigabytes worth of stuff from one hard drive to the other hard drive. A good indication of relative coolness and compared to other hard drives. If you look here, this is my internal hard drive, which is at 93 degrees. The external USB 3.0 drive is at 98 degrees. And the USB 2.0 drive, which is probably seven or eight years old now is 127 degrees. So all in all, not that bad. So like you saw with the speed tests there, it is a very good hard drive. I mean, some people don't like Western Digital, some people like Seagate or, or, or Buffalo. It's your choice to make. Really, I got this one because it was on sale and I needed, like I said, that stop gap to get me to either my NAS or my RAID array. All in all, for the price, for the amount of storage, and its compact portability, uh, if you're in the market for a new external hard drive that's minimum 500 gigs to a terabyte, I would seriously consider giving the Western Digital Elements portable hard drive a look. I've been Wonder 001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below.